In this video, we're going to talk about somatic sensation. So if we have someone walking down the street, he's receiving all kinds of information from the world around him. So he's receiving different types of sensations, so different types of sensations. He's also receiving information about different intensities of these sensations. So is it really hot outside? Is it kind of hot outside? So he's receiving information about the intensity of the different sensations. He's also receiving information about the timing. So when does he set his foot down on the ground? When does he lift the foot off the ground? If somebody drives by him and throws a hamburger at him, when does the hamburger hit him? When does the hamburger stop hitting him? So there's also information about timing that he's receiving from the world around him. And finally, he's also receiving information about where in his body the sense is originating. So if a bird, you know, comes by and pecks his arm, the brain needs to realize that, oh, there's something going on uh, on my arm. So there's also location. So information about location needs to be addressed. In this video, we're going to talk about somatic sensation. So if we have someone walking down the street, he's receiving all kinds of information from the world around him. So he's receiving different types of sensations. So different types of sensations. He's also receiving information about different he also needs to get information about pressure. So when does he set his foot down on the ground? What if somebody came by and, like we said, threw a hamburger at him? How hard did the hamburger hit him? So we need to get information about pressure. And this is also known as mechanoception. So mechanoception. So what else does he need to know? He also needs to get information about pain. So if the bird did come down and peck his arm, it would be a little painful. So he needs to get information about pain. And pain is known as nociception. And finally, he needs to get information about where his body is in space. So as he's walking along, is he really close to the sidewalk? Is he close to someone else? He needs to get information about his body's location in space. And this is known as proprioception. So these are the different types of information that he needs to acquire from the world around him through his body surface. So he also needs to know some, something about the intensity of the various stimuli, stimuli. So if it's really, really hot outside, it'd be really nice to know that versus if it's kind of cold outside. So the way intensity is encoded in the body is by how quickly the neurons fire. So there are different neurons that are sensitive to temperature. There are different neurons sensitive to pressure. So if it's really cold outside, then the neurons might not fire that much. So they might fire a few times. So if it's kind of cold outside, it's not that hot, they'll just fire a few times over the course of a minute. But if it's really hot outside, they might fire a whole bunch of times. And so how quickly they fire is how intensity is coded. So another thing that we need to acquire from our environment is the timing. So if a bird were to come down, so we've got a little bird coming down, he's going to peck this man. He's coming down, he's flying, he's got a straight shot for the arm and he pecks him right there. So the guy actually needs to know, okay, when does the pecking start? When does the pecking stop? And so in order for a neuron to encode timing, there are three different ways it can do that. So there's a neuron that the entire time the bird is pecking him, it will consistently fire action potentials. So this type of neuron is non-adapting. And it's non-adapting because you can look at the action potentials and there's an equal amount of space between each successive action potential. So basically the entire time some sort of stimulus is being applied, there's no change in the firing rate. Another type of neuron will start firing really, really quickly. So there's a whole bunch of action potentials. And then over time, it will slow down. The space between the action potentials increases. And so as you can see here, it starts firing really fast at the, at the beginning of the stimulus. And then it slows down. So the spacing actually increases. And this is known as a slow adapting neuron. And it's slow adapting because it's really slow to adapt to the change in the stimulus. Another type of neuron is going to fire really quickly as soon as the stimulus starts. And then it's going to stop firing. And then it'll fire again when the stimulus stops. So this is known as a fast adapting neuron. So fast adapting. 
Okay, and then what's the final piece of information that we need to get from the world around us? So if this bird's coming in to peck him, he needs to know that it's pecking his arm. And there needs to be some sort of way that the brain is able to register that, okay, it's my arm that's being pecked, not my leg. And so in order for the brain to do that, it relies on things called dermatomes. So if we were to draw a person here, there is the torso, he's got his arm, he's got his other arm, and he's got his legs. So each part of the body, each little part of the body is innervated by a particular nerve and that nerve goes up to the brain. So if a bird's pecking his arm, we know, okay, this arm is being pecked. And so that this arm will send a nerve to the brain and the brain's able to figure out, okay, it's this arm that's being pecked. All right, so I cleaned that up a bit. So let's imagine that we've got somebody flying in from the sky and he's headed right at our innocent bystander walking down the street. And this man just happens to have a red cape and people call him a superhero, but he's headed right for this guy. So as this guy's coming in, he's gonna crash into this poor fella walking down the street. So what types of receptors would be activated in this case? So temperature, no, not really. There's no change in temperature. Pressure, definitely, this guy's just bombarding right into this innocent bystander. So he's gonna feel a lot of pressure from the superhero's body. Pain, you betcha, he's gonna be in a lot of pain. This guy's coming a 100 miles per hour headed straight for this guy. He's probably gonna feel a little pain. And he's probably also gonna get knocked off his feet. So he's gonna feel a change in position. So these three different senses will go off. Let's look at intensity. How intense is this interaction? It looks pretty intense. You've got a superhero coming in right at you. So his neurons, all these three different types of neurons are going to fire really, really quickly. Let's look at timing. So we're going to definitely have some non-adapting neurons firing because the entire time that this guy, the superhero, is in contact with the innocent bystander, there's going to be different neurons firing steadily just so that it lets his brain know, hey, there's something going on here. There are also going to be fast adapting neurons that will fire as soon as the superhero hits the innocent bystander and then as soon as he gets off of him. So there's going to be fast adapting neurons firing. And there will also be slow adapting neurons firing the entire time that the superhero and the innocent bystander is making contact. So what about location? So the superhero is headed straight for this guy's torso. So the entire torso is going to be lit up. Maybe some of his arms are going to be lit up. So basically there are going to be nerves that innervate these three different parts of the body and they're all going to be sending information to the brain saying, hey, we've got, you know, a little bit of pain, some pressure, and there's a change in position here.